Hello, it's been a while. I'm gonna upload this to the Bury and Jen channel. I was doing, or about to do, my morning prayers, and I opened today's reading. And this is a Catholic reading, but you don't have to be Catholic to understand it, enjoy it, relate to it, learn from it. So please do stay. And if you want to have a discussion, let's have a discussion, a respectful discussion in the comments. Thank you. I was inspired to read this aloud because indeed it is raining this morning. We are getting a spring shower. And I think a lot of it confirms some of what I've been feeling in my heart throughout my studies. And I've expressed some of that in video. But I'm not going to express a lot of my own opinion here. I'm just going to read this to you. If you're reading only the KJV, you may be missing out. There are books that were taken out. And there are voices other than the Most High's. The one who pretends that he is God. Who can't even pretend that he is a man very well. So. Um, these are the saints of the day and their feasts. And this is the first reading. And it's Hosea 6, 1 through 6. They're the same across the board. Priests, of course, give their own um, lessons along with these in, in the services. But this is so that there is a communal, universal reading among the church, no matter where you are. And there's power in that. Reading 1. I also think if you watch my other video about the State of the Union address, um, well, I think it relates to how I'm feeling and how I think a lot of us uh, should feel or, or do feel or might feel soon. Come, let us return to the Lord. It is he who has rent, but he will heal us. He has struck us, but he will bind our wounds. He will revive us after two days. On the third day, he will raise us up to live in his presence. Let us know, let us strive to know the Lord. As certain as the dawn is his coming, and his judgment shines forth like the light of day. He will come to us like the rain, like the spring rain that waters the earth. What can I do with you, Ephraim? What can I do with you, Judah? Your piety is like a morning cloud like the dew that early passes away. For this reason, I smote them through the prophets. I slew them by the words of my mouth. For it is love that I desire, not sacrifice and knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. So that should tell you right here that who he's talking about, the Ephraim and those who were in Judah, that they are not pious enough. That maybe they've grown arrogant. That their noses are in the air. It's worth mentioning that the Ephraim um, were related to the Canaanites. They were of the same gene pool, though different um, different branches of that family tree. And that is a Nephilim or Nephilim Ephraim Rephaim. They are all of mixed genetics. For this reason, I smote them through the prophets. I slew them by the words of my mouth. For it is love that I desire, not sacrifice. And knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. The prophets and Christ. Their God seems a lot different than certain others. In scripture, it is our job to discern and as Paul said, to properly divide the word of God, because they're not all of God. And this is a responsorial psalm. It is the feeling or the contriteness or, or the love or the gratitude that should bubble up as you're reading that um, section. And again, I don't mean to give too much here, but you have to give something so that those uh, who don't know how it works, um, give them a little insight it's really easy to criticize something when you're on the outside of it and you don't understand the inner workings. It is mercy I desire and not sacrifice. Have mercy on us, O God. 
in your goodness, in the greatness of your compassion, wipe out the offenses of America. Thoroughly wash us from our guilt and of our sin cleanse us. It is mercy I desire and not sacrifice. So that's God, right? For you are not pleased with sacrifices. Should we offer a burnt offering, you would not accept it. That also doesn't sound like some of what is ascribed to be God in Scripture. My sacrifice, O oh God, is a contrite spirit. That's why we say the act of contrition. A heart contrite and humbled, which is why we repent. O oh God, you will not spurn. It is mercy I desire and not sacrifice. Mercy. God desires to give us mercy. But we have to turn away from from what we're doing. We have to make a 180, right? We've went down the wrong path. Be bountiful, O Lord, to Zion in your kindness by rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. Then shall you be pleased with due sacrifices, burnt offerings, and holocausts. It is mercy I desire and not sacrifice. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Do sacrifices. Do sacrifices. Again, I'm not going to interpret all of this for everybody. It is each truth comes to each of us at different times. And so this is the gospel message that goes along with those readings. Jesus addressed this parable to those who were convinced of their own righteousness. Probably much how we were feeling as we read some of that. Like, I'm not that way. You're not talking to me. So Jesus addressed these people who were convinced of their own righteousness and despised everyone else. I have to repent because there are times when I hate those people, individuals, beings, whatever they are. I despise them. I don't want them in, in our garden. Am I supposed to feel that way? Even about the progeny of the fallen? No. We're supposed to extend forgiveness because that is what we seek. So I repent of that now. I'm sorry, Lord. Two people went up to the temple area to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee took up his position. And this would be like the Jew, the religious leader, right? The rabbi, the priest, any of them, whatever word you want to use. And spoke this prayer to himself. Oh God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of humanity. Greedy, dishonest, adulterous, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I pay tithes on my whole income. But the tax collector stood off at a distance and would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast and prayed, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, the latter went home justified, not the former, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. Selah. Think on that because that is a really big problem on social media, in our society as a whole, in America, wherever it is that I live. I know that people are this way because I know I am this way. And I know that it takes work. I don't fast because I think I'm better than people. I fast to deny myself to get rid of those darker attributes that cling to me, right? from sin, from natural sin, from transgression, from the transgression of others. And that's one thing also that the Catholic Church recognizes. One, that we are a universal church. Everyone is welcome to come into the fold, right? But not everyone stays because it does take work. You need to be humbled. You need to humble yourself. Not because you're a terrible, wretched being and you're unloved. But because there is this thing attached to us, because there is this darkness within us that we have to purge out. That is the only type of purging we should be doing. What gives any one being more right to live over any other? Well, those are my readings for today. So either way, my time wasn't wasted. I hope that I am forgiven. I have participated in a lot of 
these behaviors um, a lot of iniquity? Am I as bad as some? No. Am I as good as some? No. There is no judgment for that. There is a standard that God sets, and we have all fallen short, and that's why we're all looked at somewhat similarly. But our denials, our mercies, our graces, our blessings, even our curses are all distributed in a way that will best refine our individual soul, that will best bring out the God bit that is within the Holy Spirit to allow that to take over and not the dark wolf. Have a blessed day. I love you. Please pray for me as I pray for you. I pray that you all have exactly what you need, and God knows what that is. In Jesus' name, amen.